We have been having spates of um, protests across the nation. Amen. Amen. Every man has a right. Legitimately so. To express their displeasure and pains. Everybody has it. Amen. I kept quiet for a while because, listen to me. Amen. In 2015, I warned this nation vehemently consistently because I saw the dangers ahead and you can tell the most gruesome season in the history of this nation is the last five years where lives have no value wanton killings here and there now they have faced the youth and because they don't know who is next, they have a right to say no. <laughs> Amen. A no. Any system that has no value for human lives is irrelevant. If they were kids when they were youth, would they be where they are today? Government cannot be government until the people let them know that we put them there. And nobody can rule over you except you give them permission. The Nigerian youth are finding their voice and have come to understand that together, with one voice, we have more power than any government. And so we want to see every single member of House on the Rock lending their voice, not to attack government, but to demand reforms. And we are starting with the NSARS movement. We're going to make many more demands in all the irregularities and anomalies in public and civil service. And we certainly intend to challenge everything that is wrong in our nation. You owe it to your children. You owe it to your grandchildren. You owe it to the potential of this country. Otherwise, your children will become refugees in lands that have less resources than Nigeria does. Nigeria ought to be the strongest nation in the whole wide world. And now it is time for us to wake up, rise to our responsibility, and stand our ground and make sure that not one of your brothers or sisters in Christ or in the Nigerian Brotherhood is left out of the challenge and the fight to insist and ensure that justice returns to our streets, that righteousness is restored to our land, that equity goes back to the parliamentary halls of our nation, and that equity and equality are available to all Nigerians. No longer will governments continue to steal from us. No longer will public servants and judicial officers continue to rape the system of justice. No longer should the law enforcement of our nation ever again inflict injustice upon us when they're supposed to protect justice for us. No longer. That day is over. Where is our president? Vice president is apologizing. He's writing letter. Where is our president? Oga Buhari, Baba Buhari, President Buhari, what will it take you, sir? Dear Mr. President, what will it take you? Your children are on the streets. They voted you in. What will it take you to stand up as a father? Not as a president, sir. As a father. Forget people writing script for you. For, and just say, my children. Not fellow Nigerians. Not citizens of Nigeria. My children. We have disappointed you. We have hurt you. We are sorry. If you really have a good intention, sir, what will it cost you, Mr. President, to say, my children, believe me as your president, give me 30 days. This, 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 this shall be done. If, it is not, if this is not done in 30 days, I will resign. If this is not done in six months, I will resign. What will it cost you to do that? 
If you miss this opportunity, Mr. President, you miss an opportunity to write your name in a memorable way. This is the time for you to prove that you are a man of integrity. Rise up and bring the reform that the nation needs. Answers! Answers! End police brutality! End corruption! End bloodshed! End bad governance! We call for a new Nigeria! And we thank God for our young people who have said enough is enough. <laughs> Glory to God. I knew it that a day like this will come. I knew it that is coming. That one day, another generation that will say to us, listen, <laughs> that you cannot stop us. I knew it. You can't stop them. If you like shoot them, they will be there. They have right to say no to impunity. It is called civil disobedience. Civil. Am, am I right? In legal terms, they are not carrying guns. They are not killing anyone. Have you ever seen such protests before in your life? Have you ever seen where people are protesting and cleaning the streets? Have you ever seen that? Taking care of themselves, refusing money? What other thing do you need in Nigeria? Anyone who is against them is an enemy of Nigeria. Oh, yes. I don't know about you. Anyone, this is not about political party. It has nothing to do with party. It has to do with that, the fact that we have, the, the, we have suffered too much in Nigeria. It is banana republic. Nothing is working. Some people are sitting down and, 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 and ripping this nation of the, the whole money in the country. Do you know what a hundred billion would do for you in your, in your state? A hundred billion naira put in your state and invested judicially. Do you know what it would do in your state? And somebody will pocket it and move and nothing happens. A, 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 a policeman will shoot you and say, I will shoot you and kill you and nothing will happen. What type of country is that? Now, something is going on right now in this country and it is becoming a global phenomenon. And we want to look into the word of God just to glean out certain thoughts there. And obviously, everybody knows this has to do with what we have termed the NSAS movement that is going on among young people, but it is much deeper than an NSAS movement. It is actually a cry and a call within the hearts of people in this nation for a total reformation of the way and manner in which they have been governed. In other words, this is just something symbolic about a systemic um, cor corrupt corruption that we find um, within the framework of, of this nation, Nigeria. And so we have a younger generation of people, and I want to explain from the scripture at least to show what might be going on in the realm of the spirit and how every single person can participate and help in bringing about a proper, peaceful all right, an enforcement of reformation and change without it being skewed off into a path that could become hot fill. And this is so important. Now, what do we mean by a prophetic church? In Acts chapter 2, what happened was that intercession and prayers had gone forth. And so that there was an outpouring of the Spirit upon people. And then what happened was they found in Acts them. And they found people having been baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, saying to and speaking in an unknown language. The Bible tells us in verse 11, the Cretans and the Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. 
Now, every tribe, people group at Jerusalem at that particular point in time heard, all right, these words being spoken. Now, this is what happened. And they were all amazed. The Bible tells us in verse 12, and why in doubt? So people can be amazed at what's going on, but can still be in doubt. And saying to one another, what meaneth this? In other words, what is the interpretation of what is going on? And then others mocking. And then you can find people in doubt. You find people who are amazed. And then you find people that mock it. And what they said is, these men are full of new wine. But then Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice. And this is what a prophetic community is all about a correct and accurate interpretation of what is going on from the mind of God. Said, you men of Judah and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by prophet Joel. So they brought forth the prophetic word, to describe what was actually going on on the earth and said, folks that are mocking, folks that are in doubt, uh, that are saying that these people must be drunk physically, what really is going on, he said, is what is found in the book of prophet Joel. And it shall come into pass in the last days that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And then he went on and described it. So we want to begin this journey of going into the word of God and begin to describe from the scriptures what just might be going on within this particular nation at this particular point in time, and just to show uh, certain things concerning it.